What's going on guys, Nero Kane here, back on Travolta Breakers Season 4 slash First Anniversary video. And in today's video, um, I kind of just wanted to talk to you guys. I just kind of wanted to talk to you guys because I feel like it's been a minute since um, you guys kind of spoke. And um, I just want to talk about um, Season 4, the First Anniversary. And I understand that it hasn't been perfect, but uh, you probably saw the title of this video, you've seen the thumbnail of this video. And I'm just saying that we need to cut the devs... A little bit of slack when it comes to Dragon Ball The Breakers. Now, I understand that um, this season's launch and the first anniversary has been rocky. I, I understand that. I'm like, I, you know, I have said, I've made videos about did they ruin the first anniversary? Oh, Flex Q isn't working. Raider Q isn't working. I can't even play the game. You can't play games with friends on PlayStation anymore. Things like that. I'm like, PlayStation Plus is coming out and like the game isn't working still. They didn't extend it 2.5 times XP, even though the game wasn't working like that well for the first couple of days. You couldn't even queue it all for like the first day. You had to do customs practically. So it's just like, I understand they made a lot of mistakes and I understand that season four was rocky. And for some of you, it might've turned you off to playing the rest of the season. Maybe you're just watching people like myself play it and talk about it, right? But I think we need to like take a deep breath, look back and see everything that they were trying to do and see and realize the intentions that they had because i truly feel they tried to make the live stream and this season and this anniversary the best that they possibly could make it and try to get everything that we have ever asked for implemented for this season so let's basically just go down the list of everything that they intended on having for on um, the launch of this season so one of the biggest announcements that they did during the special uh, anniversary live stream where they had all the producers uh was the announcement of a ranking system and this is something that i've been personally asking for since season two or probably even season one of dragon ball the breakers and for me as a creator and as a player and as a fan of this game this gives me evergreen content that I can do, and this gives me something to farm and work for beyond Zenny, beyond like my Raider level, beyond my Survivor level. Because typically, how Dragon Ball the Breakers has gone is that after you complete the Dragon tier, after you hit the max Survivor level of that season, um, and if you hit the max Raider level, what else do you really have to grind for? The game gets stale. They drop transfers every month, and it's just like, you're kind of just sitting there on your hands like, damn bro, I hope this uh, next season comes back uh, pretty soon, dude. So that's pretty much like why this was such a big deal. Now, it is not implemented in the game yet, but they did confirm that it will be coming this season. And this is just one of those things that we have been asking for for a very long time that they intend to include or intended to include for the season. They haven't announced a delay or anything like that yet, so let's not panic. But this is supposed to be coming this season. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, the Raider feature updates. So they added it so you can reset your skill points. This is something they've been requesting for a very, very long time. So the fact that they finally did it was awesome because, you know, it kind of stinks that, you know, you're just starting the game. You might just put your points anywhere. But now you're actually able to reset your points and put them to the best uh, most optimal placements that you would want to do adding more voice lines it's fun it's not anything crazy but the uh biggest thing they announced after this was the implementation of raider q so again i understand and before you leave a mean and angry comment understand that they wanted raider q to work they wanted Raider Q to work so badly because they knew how much we wanted this, guys. They knew how much they wanted us. And I think, like, what I think they should have done, and I talked about this previously, is that I think they should have announced uh, Raider Q earlier, and they should have tested it out in the public test server because they have a public test server, but they didn't use this to experiment with it and see if it was ready. And I think a part of the reason why is because they want to surprise us and they wanted to excite us to play for season four of Dragon Ball The Breakers. Now, was this a good idea? I could be wrong. I don't know if this is their intentions. Like maybe they just didn't want to announce it because it wasn't ready. But I still feel like they should have tried it out before just implementing it with Broly, one of the most hype raiders and one of the most like latest and greatest villains that has been introduced in Dragon Ball. So like, of course, everybody's going to want to play Raider. And of course, that would mess up with the Q system. And that's why you couldn't find games because everybody was playing Raider and not enough people were playing Survivor, unfortunately. 
So again, although it did not, you know, work as intended, the fact that they had the intention of giving us Raider Q for the anniversary with rank and this other feature that I'm going to be talking about in a second shows not only do they care, but that they listen. They listen. They listen to the fact that we wanted ranked and they listened that we wanted skill points to be reset and they listened that we wanted Raider Q. So just keep just keep that in mind before you like go come at them crazy is basically what I'm saying. Now, of course, the biggest announcement that they did arguably in the entire live stream or just the entire history of the game was announcing crossplay. I can still not believe this is real. A part of me still doesn't believe this is real, dude. Like, I don't think people realize not only how big this announcement is for Dragon Ball The Breakers, this is good for the Xbox and Steam um, platforms who are typically a little lower in terms of the player base, and Switch and PlayStation, which to my knowledge are the most populated and PlayStation being the healthiest, could help out Xbox and Steam being more populated and just getting more matches faster, right? But this isn't just a massive W for Dragon Ball The Breakers. This is a massive W for Dragon Ball games and any anime games made under Bandai Namco. Now, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. You can, you can fact check me. To my knowledge, the only Bandai Namco game ever to receive crossplay is Tekken 8. Tekken 8. Took them eight games to make crossplay, bro. Dragon Ball The Breakers is getting it within like a year and some change. That's huge, dude. Xenoverse 2 did not announce crossplay. Fighters did not announce crossplay. They announced rollback and still haven't gotten it. And you'll see in a moment that I was expecting crossplay to be implemented by the end of the following year, potentially, because we don't know. It could it could take as long as rollback, but we'll see in a second. Crossplay is actually coming faster than we originally thought. So I don't know if you guys have already seen this news, but I'll talk about it here as well. So they did this little series on the official Dragon Ball the web uh, Dragon Ball website, where uh, Kotani, the producer of Dragon Ball the Breakers, was talking about the future of the game. And he mentions twice here, um, here that they're going to do crossplay uh, for season five, and they reiterated at the end, Dragon Ball the Breakers is sure to become even more interesting in the future, not only with season four celebrating its first anniversary, but also with season five in the implementation of crossplay. They plan on bringing crossplay sooner than I believe anybody expected. So with all this in mind and with all these factors, guys. I really do think we got to cut the devs some slack, man. Now, I understand people are upset that Raider with Friends isn't here. People are upset that the game wasn't working properly at the start of Season 4. People are upset with the lack of a pity system. I'm upset with that. I, I'm upset with that, bro. You guys see my shafts? I'm upset with that. People are upset um, with the fact that... Actually, I'm kind of forgetting things that people are upset with. But there's obviously things to be upset about what, like with this game right but i feel like we kind of just got to realize how lucky we are with this dev team dude they update the game fairly regularly they did a massive patch where like change rocket became meta dude like guys i don't know if you realize this skill i mean you know arguably it's not as good as it was in season three this skill was a meme in season two and season one terrible they made it meta. They went back and made this skill good. They went back and made skills that were bad better. They they buffed survivors, guys. They buffed survivors by reducing the cooldowns on a lot of skills that I don't think needed the reduction. So it's just like, I think this game is fairly balanced. And when it's not, they adjust things, dude. They adjusted the Ginyu Force. The Ginyu Force was insanely broken in the uh the public test server originally and they tuned him down people still think he's op in certain circles i think he's you know very strong uh i don't know if he's op i think maybe certain scenarios you could say he is but um i i just feel like these these devs they care they know it they they know what we want and they are willing to give it to us even if it's not ready now you could argue maybe that's not the most responsible thing to do or maybe they did think it was ready and unfortunately it just didn't come to pass but I think to say that these devs don't care, that these devs don't try, that we have terrible devs is not fair, guys. It's just not fair. 
because I think everything that was shown and announced in the live stream in this interview here, here and here, like guys, like I, I think I think we got it pretty good, man. I do think we got it pretty good. Um, you know, if everything was working, you know, as intended, I like I'm, you know, I plan on going to Dragon Ball Games Battle Hour. Like I generally felt like getting a card and giving it to like the dev team. I mean, I, I still kind of do because they still killed it, dude. They still killed it. Like, even though the game wasn't working, like, as good as it could have been, like, you know, it's, it's still to this day, unfortunately, the queues aren't as fast as they were in Season 3, even with so many people playing the game right now. I still think they deserve our thanks. I still think they deserve our thanks for, uh, you know, for giving us Broly. Uh, I, I understand. Oh, okay, yeah, that's another thing. The new map's not working that great. And I will say another thing that people have been disappointed about is, is uh, kind of uh the lack of extra tender loving care that like vegeta and the ginyu force got so if you guys have not seen my showcases on vegeta vegeta has a special cutscene that if you kill him when he's in the great ape there's a cutting of the tail animation vegeta reverts back into his base form and he loses and it's really cool uh if ginyu body changes and you defeat him um you have a frog animation and unfortunately i was really hoping that broly would get like a chilai wish send him back to his planet he grew up on like animation it didn't give us that sadly so i will say when it came to going the extra mile they didn't really do it with broly as much as they did with ginyu and um eight vegeta but i do think the implementation of the super transfers is awesome i think being able to play as gogeta without even having him like as a character like as a transfer is really really cool um you know the map not being playable right now does suck but i think they did a great job with the map i really do enjoy it so I do think there is a lot to praise the devs for, and there is a lot to criticize. But guys, if you have any comments or concerns for the devs, you, there is an email that you can email them. I'm not sure where it is. I forget where it is. Uh, some of the comments below like list it. But please be like courteous in the Twitter replies. I feel like a lot of people are very, very rude to the Breakers dev team in the Dragon Ball the Breakers like Twitter. Um, they told me at Battle Hour, they read the replies, guys. So when you're, like, spamming stuff like, oh, this is OP, this is OP, this is OP, nerf this, nerf this, nerf this, in, like, every post, or you're like, this game sucks, this game blows, like, it doesn't really help anything, and it probably disincentivizes them to look at the Twitter comments. So just keep that in mind, is all I'm trying to say. But anyways, guys, I just wanted to do this video because I understand that season four wasn't perfect. I understand the first anniversary um, wasn't perfect, but I feel like the devs really tried to make this season and this anniversary as good as it possibly could have been. And although it wasn't a complete success, I still think it was, uh, was a success. So I just want to make this video just because I feel like maybe I have been a little too harsh and I think maybe portions of the community have been a little too harsh on the breakers devs because i really do think they went above and beyond uh for the animations of the upcoming transfers for the animations that we currently have up the super transfers like i really do think uh they are trying to uh like you know save this game and like make it like really really bumping dude make it really really bumping anyways guys that's the video let me know in the comments below if you think i'm white knighting the dev team i really don't think i am i'm gonna call them out when they make mistakes i'm gonna you know call it out when i think they do something good dude i try to be as you know open-minded and as fair as possible right but uh if you think are you happy with the dev team and all things like consider with everything i mentioned uh keep in mind bro to get more eyes on breakers they did the fantastic idea i don't know if it was the breakers dev team but they had a fantastic idea of bringing in all the other dragon ball games like together which was cool in general i think they should do that more not just for breakers anniversary but just like for the games in general it's really cool to see all the games come together but it was just a good way to get uh more eyes on the season as well but uh with that being said again let me know your thoughts on the dev team are you happy uh with the decisions they made throughout the year uh with this season in general uh like the video if you enjoyed and uh subscribe to the iron king channel for more discussion videos like these and i'll catch y'all the next one take care stay safe have fun peace out